Hello, my name is Gabriela Lopez Bautista and I will be talking about the Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009. We're going to start talking a little bit about the case background. The Hate Crimes Prevention Act is an abbreviation of the Matthew Shepard and James Burr Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. This act is named after the victims of hate crimes, Matthew Shepard and James Burr Jr., who were brutally assassinated. Matthew Shepard was a gay American student at the University of Wyoming who was beaten, tortured, and left to die near Laramie on the night of October 6, 1998. He was taken by rescuers to a hospital where he died six days later from severe head injuries received during the beating. The suspects, Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson, were arrested shortly after the attack and charged with first-degree murder following Shepard's death. James Burr Jr. was an African-American man who was murdered in Jasper, Texas in 1998. In the morning of June 7, 1998, Bird was leaving his parents' house when he accepted a ride from three white men, Sean Allen Berry, Lawrence Russell Brewer, and John William King. Instead of driving Bird home, the three men drove the 49-year-old to a deserted area and beat him. Wrapping a chain around his ankles, they dragged him down an asphalt road for over three miles. Bird managed to stay conscious while being dragged until his head and right arm were severed by a culvert. Bird's headless torso was stumped off along a road in Jasper. These two murders, along with other hate crimes, led to the creation of the Matthew Shepard and James Bird Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009. Okay, so we have talked a little bit about the background information of the case of the act but now it is important for us to make sure we understand what is a hate crime what is considered to be a hate crime what is the impact of the hate crime in society in communities uh, because that is going to lead us to the conversation that we're going to have later in this presentation A hate crime is a crime, typically one involving violence, that is motivated by prejudice on the basis of race, religion, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, disabilities, or similar grounds. While doing my research on this um, topic, I found myself reading an article uh, with the name, the title, uh, 10 Years Fighting Hate by David A. Hall, and he states that hate crimes can often have an outsized effect because they are intended to terrorize not only the victim but entire populations. This means that a hate crime is not only intended to hurt a person, uh, which is the victim of the crime, but it is also intended to terrorize um, and create a fear in the community in which the victim pertains. Uh, for example, if we have um, the murder of hate crime of um, Matthew um, Shepard. Um, he was murdered because he was gay. He was murdered because of his sexual orientation. Um, and now everyone who identifies to be the same, um, to have the same sexual orientation as Matthew, is going to be terrorized because they're going to be afraid of something happening to them because of people that have this type of mindset. Um, another example, we also have um, James Bird. He was killed. Uh, he was killed and murdered uh, because he was um, African American. Well every african american is going to be terrorized is going to it's going to fear uh for their lives they're going to think okay they if this person thinks that we are inferior then there are going to be other people who are going to think the same um 
that are you gonna try to murder us because of our skin color because of our race because of our ethnicity because of our sexual orientation and um that is what the hate crime intends to do it is not only intended to terrorize only one person which is the victim but it is also intended to um to create fear in the community uh, to create fear among uh, certain groups for this reason it was very important to create an act that would make citizens feel protected even though sometimes this act is considered to be a political symbol this act makes citizens feel protected under the law on October 22nd of 2009, the act was passed and signed into law by Barack Obama. It was a writer to the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2010, and it was created to help state and local jurisdictions investigate and prosecute hate crimes more efficiently by providing financial funding. It aimed to protect people, reduce hate crimes, and have the resources to investigate these crimes. This act has been active for almost 13 years. But the important question is, has this law accomplished its primary objective throughout these years? Here we can see a chart provided by the Department of Justice uh, showing the annual reported averages of hate crimes from 2010 to 2019. Um, we can see that the average annual hate crime victimizations is 243,770. Victimizations reported to the police are 107,850. Victim reported that the police confirmed the crime was a hate crime was 13,850. And the average annual hate crime victims is uh, 7,830. Only from January 2019 through February 2022, there have been 62 hate crime cases filed in the United States. Now, in this slide, we can see the reported hate crimes from 1991 to 2009. And we can see that 55% were motivated by racial bias, 70% by religious bias, 14% by sexual orientation bias, 14% by ethnicity bias, and 1% by disability bias. In this chart, we can see the reported hate crimes from 2010 to 2020. The percentage of hate crimes based on race or ethnicity uh, was 65%. Religious was 12%. Sexual orientation was 17%. Disability was 0%. Gender identity 4%. And gender 1%. Okay, so if we take a look at the data presented um we can see that the the numbers of hate crimes from 2010 to 2022 to till today um numbers are very very high um and this is not something ideal when there's a law when there's an act that is supposed to reduce those numbers of crime so we know that the Hate Crimes Prevention Act was created um, to provide funding for investigating and prosecuting. Um, it was also uh, created to reduce hate crimes and it was also created to protect the citizens. If we take a look at the first um, goal um, or the first objective, uh, which is um, providing funding to investigate and prosecute and we look at the high numbers that have been provided uh, by the Department of Justice um, I think that that goal is being accomplished because if there was no funding then those crimes wouldn't be reported or wouldn't be solved um, or wouldn't be investigated um, because they have the funding because they have money to investigate the crimes, then um, they were able to capture 
more criminals who murder based on hate. So I believe that that part is being accomplished. The second goal or objective, which is to reduce the hate crimes. I think that if I'm looking at the high numbers of hate crimes, then that goal is not being accomplished because there are so many hate crimes and we all have different characteristics. We all have different beliefs. Um, and sometimes when people have a close mind, it is really hard to help those people uh, or persuade those people to change their mind or their perspective on something on society. Um, so I believe that uh, that objective is not being um, accomplished. And the third one, making the citizens feel protected. I think that goal is, um, that objective is kind of being accomplished because when there's a law and that it, that involves all citizens, uh, then you automatically feel protected. And there are sometimes people don't look deeper into um, this type of cases. And so they don't look at how many uh, hate crime cases have been filed during a certain amount of time and they're not aware of what's happening out there but they know that there's a law that protects them so i think that it's kind of being accomplished as one of the authors uh said um this law this act i think can be considered a political symbol uh finally i think the um this law can be amended or can be revised in some way for the for the law to show better results. Um, the one thing that I did not mention before was that this act does not uh, involve or does not cover on threats, and I think that's something that should be covered or under the law because when you're receiving threats then you're being um, affected, whether it is mentally, whether it is socially, but you are having an impact because of that, of those threats. Um, why should we wait for someone who has threatened us to, to harm us, to, to use violence against us because of who we are? That shouldn't be happening. So I think that that's one part where this act could be amended. In conclusion, I believe that the act is partly being accomplished. Mm. So some objectives um, are actually working um, and some are not.